We're live. We're live on Adobe Radio. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I have a very special guest today. He is a close friend, an extremely talented actor from across the pond, as they say. <laughs> he stars in the hit show on Hulu, Black Cake. He plays Clarence Littleman. Henry. 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 Clarence Littleman Henry. C- Clarence Littleman Henry. Yeah, I was saying it right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friend, uh, close confidant, Anthony Mark Barrow. Welcome. Thank you for having me back. Wait, son. You know, I was going to just start roasting you as we always do I'm with each other. Prepared. And we're going to get to that Great. soon. But I have to say in front of everybody right off the bat, we worked uh, starting off on the NBC pilot, The Getaway, That's together. Good. And I knew you were a good actor from them, uh, from there. Not from our performance on the uh, on on stage. <laughs> not from that. But when we did a self tape together, yeah, I remember. and I was like, "Oh shit, he's actually really, really good." Hmm. And that's when we cultivated our friendship. And then after watching the first episode of Black Cake, I'm a little bit into the second episode. Hmm. Wow. Thank you. I'm saying this friend to friend, colleague hmm. to colleague. That is a master class in acting. You are flawless in it. Um. Well, thank you. I, reached the stage in my life when I can accept compliments um, and I'll tell you and, and yeah. I want to and I want to go further with it okay. you are so clear subtle but with high stakes with mm. all your beats um, you have this 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 look in your eyes that's just filled with life and mm. I believe you mm. and I'm your friend and mm. I don't recognize you at times mm. watching that so seriously kudos man um, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, the director, Natalia Lita, who gave me a lot of license and just the way that she directs. And it made me um, think back retrospectively to our time on uh, The Getaway, yes. which was the complete opposite to that in mm-hmm. terms of Natalia's processes. We'd get to set, we'd have a little talk about it, and then she would just say to me, Mir and I, let's just see where it takes us. And we run the lines, and then that opening scene from episode one where he first meets her. That was pretty much our first rehearsal. And then she just put the cameras around us. That was purely instinctive from Mia and myself coming in. I heard the music coming in. And um, maybe we did about five or six takes, but that was just built on her trusting us. But ironically, to take you back a bit, when the casting came in, um, I was excited about it. But then I read, I read the book because I just needed an in because obviously it's based on the book, the best-selling book, New York Times best-selling book, and also it was on Obama's summer reading list. Um, so obviously that's why it got a lot of traction. I remember reading a segment in the book where little man Henry, who's obviously um, a lone shark and he's a murderer and a rapist, he goes to see uh, Cobby's dad and asks permission to date her. And that was my in. I'm like, I can't play all of the other stuff. What I'm going to lean into is the humanity of him. And that despite what he does that we never see but we hear about, he has a level of old school uh, charm. And I'm like, that's what I'm holding on to. You know, the fact that he's quite chivalrous in his own way. Yeah. He's, and he says in the book that he went four or five times to ask permission. I'm like... That's a guy who has certain values, mm. and that's what I held on to. And so, in the in, in that opening scene, uh, Lynn has given him permission to go and see her. Yeah. So I'm not doing anything wrong, and he's not used to women kind of um, not taking advantage of his advances. So there's a moment that the camera kind of caught and. I've got some of the outtakes actually that Mia's mom had sent me from Video Village that when I get her uh, backed up against the fridge, I don't quite know what to do because no one's ever said no to me before. And there's a moment when I'm, I'm a bit kind of flummoxed. It's a split second because I like to show the humanity in someone when he's not mm-hmm. quite in control. He doesn't quite know what to say. Yeah. And that's what I've tried to portray. And it, it thankfully comes across on camera and uh, I've had a lot of great feedback from him. But, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to present the humanity uh, to quite a uh, complex character. Well, 
I, I think it must have been such a big struggle for you to play the charming ac aspect <laughs> of it because, I mean, l you know, y you. I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, it's great to play a, a baddie. <laughs> A, um, a baddie? A baddie. Um, I think the um, a baddie? Is that what you the the modern terms of what saying a baddie <laughs> is like a really attractive female chick. So I don't think. Oh, okay. So I don't think that would be appropriate. What for would we say then? Uh, right? Yeah, no. You know, like she's and a nefarious character. How about that? Nefarious. Nefarious. Oh, sorry. Just, I thought he, you said fairious. Here My we bad. go again. What? I just I'm <laughs> just misheard you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> nefarious. Sorry. It's just late at night now. Right. Um, yeah, it must be fun playing a nefarious character. Yeah, I mean it's it's. For me, it's the reason why. Why is he like that? And again, call me the boring actor. I remember reading lots of what was going on in Jamaica at the time. Mm. There was a whole political internal struggle. And you'd have these dons, little man, who the government would set up in different parishes to run the place. And that, again, that was my end. I was thinking, right, okay, so I'm gonna be like one of those. And then I thought, around about the time, in my mind, he was quite into film and he'd be watching all these mafia films. So he was basing himself on the mafia. And I remember when I got the the, uh, the call to say that I'd uh, been cast, literally the next day, Hayley, our uh, wardrobe, had called me. And I said, yeah, Hayley, I need a wig. And I saw him straight away. I knew what his hair was like because he'd been watching all of these mafia films. And you know, she, she was so accommodating. Even the cut of the suit, slightly big shoulders, the whole look. I have to give a lot of props to production. Um, Haley was just amazing. Tiley packed her in terms of we went through about four iterations of the wig, wasn't getting it right. And I knew, for example, that he wanted finger waves in his hair because, in my mind, he was watching a lot of influence from American culture. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I based him on, but obviously then transferring that into the Jamaican culture, socially and politically of the time. Man. I, I, the, the, the layers lot, right? upon layers. <laughs> no, there's so many layers to this. And, you know, we, we're both instructors. You're a head of acting at IDSA here in the Los Angeles branch. And something I, I, I really harp on the students is specificity. Mm. You have to be specific. You have mm. to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And this is uh, just attesting to that. Like, mm. the specificity you, you have with this character. And, and yeah, kudos to production for allowing you to, and giving you yeah, the freedom yeah. and and uh, hopefully encouraging this because uh, that's what makes good television. In all honesty, I haven't I haven't watched a good episode of television in, in a while. And yeah. watching that, I was like, all right, this well, is some good. There's some good, good, solid acting in that episode, and and I, I'm sure throughout the series too. Again, I, I got, I've always got to give props. Um, I worked with two directors on that, Zetna Fuentes. Uh, yeah. who directed the hell out of episode seven that just aired last week. I mean, she was incredible. And I started yeah. working with her on the pilot, but sadly uh, she was ill. So Natalia Lisa came in and just picked up from episode one, two, and three. So I got to work with mm. those two. But captain of the ship, Maria Jo Serra, who is our showrunner, again, leads from the front, creates a set that is collaborative. And I just now love working with female directors. Um, you know, I'm not as experienced as you. I'm quite new to the screen world. And that experience that we had in Mexico, um, as great as the location was, the experience on set working with that particular director wasn't great. But then I've got this to compare it to. Mm -hmm. And if working with female directors are always going to be like this, then sign me up. I never want to work with the male director again. Unless they're as collaborative as these guys. Well, I think one of the biggest uh, obstacles in the, uh, the pilot we shot... Uh, was the fact that uh, I had dysentery and so did like a bunch of other people on set. That we the the water was not friendly to our systems. Let's just I, say that I was okay. I escaped clearly. Yeah. How did you do that? I'm a nice person. What does that mean? It's that called, makes no sense. It's called karma, I believe. No. I, I mean, I don't know. I just, you? Yes. I was fine. Anthony. I was fine. I never got ill once. Anthony. It's true. Anthony, I know now that the strike's over, you were really pro producers. You were pro studios. I, how does that feel coming back to the actor's side? This guy. This guy. I mean, I don't know what to say to that. Um, seriously, I never got ill. Yeah, that's insane to me. That's mm. insane because, honestly, the last few days on that show, mm. I was like, I might die. I might die. And if this gets worse after I come back to America, I have to go to the emergency room. I really did not have solid poops for maybe three weeks. 
And we were eating the same food. Uh, and drinking the same water. safe bottled water, which... That turned out not to be the safe. Yeah. Thought, but yeah. I mean, a lot of people got sick. Yeah, a lot. And that's why I'm very fortunate. I don't know why. Do you think it's because you're 86 and you've lived a long life no. and your body has just built up this immunity? I just think it's because I'm a good person. I doubt that. The proof is in the pudding or the pooping, as one would say. That's right. Well... Uh, great, great I, by me. Congratulations on Black Cake. I thought okay. it was a cooking show the first time I heard you got cast in it, and I was like, <laughs> this is it. This guy. The Black Chef on Black Cake. Yeah, it's a competent. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was like, this guy loves baking, so yeah. watch out, people. The Great British Bake Off. And uh, you no. should have seen the look on my face when I started watching the first episode. I'm like, this is intense for a <laughs> cooking show. <laughs> She's running through the woods, sweat. Oh, the ocean! Looking oh for my ingredients. Gosh. Look, Wait a minute. Looking for rare ingredients <laughs> that can only be found in Jamaica in the sixties. How do you think you do on a cooking show or like a reality competition show? I'd never do reality TV. You'd never do it. Why? No. That's not my question. First of all, mm. I hate when people do that. I literally asked my question and then he like dismissed it. No, no. Because I'm saying if you were on one, but do you think you'd? Oh my god, that's good. This is good podcasting. So it's it's hypothetical. If hypothetically I would do a yes, reality I'm not TV offering show. you a job on a real um, competition well, reality no, show. I, I have a reason for not doing reality TV because bear in mind, God, oh here we go politics. So reality TV came out of you're going to lose probably one of the three listeners who are watching anyway. Damn, um, <laughs> that is actually so that, that's a lie because my mom rude. will watch this. So that before I love your mom. You never met her. Oh, oh have you? Look at that. I love your mom. I can't love your mom if I haven't met her. I guess you can. I have a lot of respect for your mother. Because you love me. Um, uh, (laughs) So. That is the loudest those sirens have ever been. Because I am here. Uh, Yeah, reality TV. Yeah, they're worried about you, so the ambulances are going to stand by. Always the ageist jokes. (laughs) God's sake. Um, No, I'm not a great fan of reality TV. I, I can't watch it. I understand that. Right. So, right. hypothetically, yes. my guy, yes. if you were yes. on yes. a competition show of mm. any sorts, whether mm. it be cooking yeah. or road rules or... or road any, rules, or, what's that? Uh, it was an old 90s show. It was like a reality competition show. They do like obstacles. This is, you know, back when you were in your 60s, it was like a big <laughs> yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. I'm a third marriage. <laughs> How would you think? Do you think you'd do good in competition, like in a reality competition? Yeah, but show? not baking. I'm, I'm quite competitive, as you know. So yeah. something competitive, I'd like. Yeah. Uh, so physical. Yeah, I think so. Okay. How do you think you you think you would do good on Survivor? I like that. I mean, there's um, a show in the UK called "I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here." I'm sure. Yes. Over here, where they put them in Australia, like in the, in the outback. Yeah. Um, that stuff. I okay. think I'd like just to challenge myself mentally. You would die in the first like eight hours. No. You'd be like, oh, well, more slippers. Oh, eight hours. No. no, no. You guys need to laugh harder. Maybe. They will when you me. say something funny. That bothers me. They will when you say something funny. <laughs> you Alex, got, you got a lovely went, smile from uh, us. Uh, no, you, you got, gave me a lovely, uh, one of those, slight, I, lovely smile. One of those was ironic like this. smiles. When is he going to be funny? Um, I wouldn't last eight hours. It'd probably last about, I don't know, two hours. I mean, some of the stuff they have to do is extreme, and then obviously their food intake goes down. Oh, no. Well, just bring your jacket with the largest zippers I've ever seen in my life, and I think you'd do great. It begins. I I'm, mean, your style, w- w- <laughs> I would, you know what? Are I would we talking about me personally or now my style in the show? No, no, you personally. We'll come back to the show in a little bit. Right. I, I want to go through your closet. <laughs> It's, okay. You have the most eclectic choices I've ever seen in my life. I'm an artist. Do you dress you or does your wife dress you? My child dresses me. Oh, okay. That will come as no surprise to you. Makes By sense. the way, in line of where we were last time I was here and you not knowing who Basquiat was, I decided to wear a Basquiat t-shirt today. Just who's, saying. Who's Basquiat again? There we go. Who's Basquiat? This is season two of We Sam Not Knowing Anything About Art. Can we look up Basquiat again? <laughs> Somebody look up basket. I really don't remember our conversation on basket. I'm forward moving, man. If something happened in the past, it better be memorable. And by the way, side note, when Dory. somebody when somebody goes Dory. to Oh, you don't remember my name? Oh, you know what my favorite thing to say is? If, especially if they try to embarrass me in front of other people, I go, "No, be more memorable." Oh, that's rude. See, that's why you had dysentery. 
Cue the laughter. Thank you, Peyton. Stop <laughs> laughing harder at his jokes than at my jokes. I, he's being funnier. On cue. It's, I'm sorry. It's, it's, I'm British. Oh, see, I it's, slipped. it's the timing. See, karma. This is what happened yeah. in Mexico because oh, of your, God. your energy. Hold my hands. It's okay. Oh, my gosh. They're so smooth. Oh, I've seen this movie. There you go. No, 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 there's a movie done on, on him, right? Yeah, 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 I've seen clips from this. The, the guy who plays him is very interesting. He has a, um, a scene with Andy Warhol. Jeffrey Wright um, yes. Yes. played him in the original movie. And um, there's a wonderful actor in Hollywood called Kelvin Harrison Jr. the third. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's got a phenomenal uh, work ethic. He's about to play him as well, I think. Now that's terrible, right? No. That's not terrible? Do you? No. Sorry, I'm trying to see. <laughs> And I do have that as a T-shirt. I was going to wear it today as well. That I'm not. I'm, you know what? You're not Respect. A fan? I'm sure. I'm, I'm. I'm not a fan of this type of art. That's okay. Yeah. You don't have it's to be. Fan, but kudos to him. I'm but sure it'd be an interesting conversation to have. That's for sure. Very much so. Is he still alive? No. Sadly, he died. Really? At 27, I think. Yeah. 27. Mm. Wow, that's really young. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But his estate is is a. Uh, Quite tremendous and making a lot of money for his family. Well, good for him. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. But, but uh, one of those artists who uh, shone brightly for a short period of time and sadly uh, mm. left this plane. You know what? I feel like if you were an artist, you know what kind of art you would make? <laughs> I am an artist. <laughs> oh, you're an artist? Yeah, yeah. What do you do? Do you know what? It's interesting. Uh, what? I was listening to one of your mm -hmm. podcasts a few weeks ago and uh, I can't remember who you had, but you were talking about art and of late I've been cooking I'm like why am I cooking but it was because in the strike normally our art is created either on set or doing self tapes mm -hmm. and I thought why am I cooking it's because I had to find something to create mm -hmm. um, I've kind of enjoyed it I'm like yeah I'm an artist I always have to find something creative to do just saying wow I'm really glad you told me that and I'm really glad <laughs> that our <laughs> listeners yeah heard that thank you so much well Anthony, i thought i'd share for sharing with the world that so, you enjoy cooking actually alex and peyton Holy maybe shit. well maybe the answer to that original question is yes i could go on a cooking show because clearly i hadn't thought about that <laughs> look at that <laughs> <laughs> i surprised I myself oh look my at god i know right that's so, just wonderful. Yeah. This show has come full circle. Look we at usually that. do an hour, but mm. honestly, I don't think we're going to get better than that. Boom. Play us out, Peyton. There you go. Tune in <laughs> next week. <laughs> when I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and the week after. Oh. Well, I got to say, uh, I am a, such a lucky individual to be part of the IDSA faculty. Mm -hmm. I've been enjoying teaching tremendously at the Los Angeles branch, and you are the head acting, uh, head of acting over there. Yeah. And um, one of the aspects that I am looking forward to mm. next semester is, uh, and and also the the way it's kind of, um, I've heard you talk about it, other students talk about it. It's very there's a lot of discipline involved in the program and I want to keep that yeah. up. I want to keep the standards high with that. Yeah. Um, I think that's so crucial for uh, actors in general, that sort of structure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for having me on the team. You're welcome. Um, I want to share some stuff from my experiences so far. So far I've been there for two semesters now yeah. and I'm sure some students are listening to this currently. And there's a common question that gets brought up yeah and one of those aspects and I wanted to see how you answer it is um, a student will do a scene yeah and it's one note mm. a lot of beginner actors have this problem it's yeah. just one note mm -hmm. and how do you approach an mm. actor who's delivering a scene like that I have a mantra that I say to them, don't play the scene, play the moment. Um, because a lot of them will read the scene and that's just it. I'm like, it's kind of what you were talking about before in terms of there's so many clues within a text mm -hmm. in terms of whether it's backstory, whether it's about relationship, whether it's about time, whether it's about any form of narrative. And I think a lot of actors are so... Um, 
enthusiastic to get into the script and they want to get to the drama. And I always say there's no drama till there's drama. And they forget to be taken by surprise. And the whole point of being an actor is we've rehearsed, we've rehearsed, we've rehearsed. But whether you're on camera or on stage, the audience are seduced into thinking that it's the first time we've heard it. It's about having the art of spontaneity. But ultimately, we Sam, for me, it's are you listening? And I often say to actors, no, you're just waiting for your cue line. Mm-hmm. So many of them are waiting for their cue lines. They're not actually listening. And I often say to them, so if we Sam has a five-page monologue and he's talking to you, you're only reacting when it's your cue line. And he could have had so much pertinent information about your relationship, what just happened, and you are not taking any of that in. You're not being affected by what he's saying, what he's not saying, what he's doing, what he's not doing. Um, And that for me is an experience. I get it, because I was like that too. And I remember uh, an acting tutor when I was at drama school saying, you're a good actor when it's your turn to speak. Mm but what do you do when you're not speaking? And I couldn't answer him because I thought, oh, I don't know. He went, I know. Yeah. And from that moment, I thought, right, I've got to just start to listen, but not, and then I went through a phase of acting like I'm listening. <laughs> no, just be present. And being present is doing exactly what you're doing at the moment, which is just being open and just listening and having an opinion. Sometimes that opinion will be physicalized and sometimes it'll be internalized, but just be present. Mm. How do you, um, answer this question mm. or how do you help fix a student who is having trouble staying present because I notice that with some students okay I'm quite brutally honest I gotta plug see these things that for me is the main culprit if you can't be present in your own life and people are like this all the time we're having a conversation and you he just pulled here. up a phone for those of you listening I know yeah, yeah. that's what it is it's, oh yeah. sorry for those who are listening I pulled up a phone <laughs> yeah 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 it's fine. See, they laugh again. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I, 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 by the, uh, side note, I hate how hard you both laughed at that because that was, that, that was not that funny. What do you mean? That was not that funny. That was not that funny. No, no, no. It, the situation was funny. The situation was funny. Situation comedy. See? I feel like they're trying to get in your good graces. No, no, no. And that, they're already in my good graces. I might be projecting, but that's bothering you me. It's not good graces, it's honesty. Thank you. So, um, we Sam, I see it all the time. Like, I walk into mm. the school. And where the school was at pre-COVID, and it's no uh, detriment to our current crop of students, you'd walk in and it would be a hive of activity, students rehearsing running lines. Now, oftentimes, they'll come in and they're just on their phones. But also, society is on their phones. So if you spend five days a week on your phone, yeah, then how do you expect to come in and be present in a scene? Because you've got to... What we do... Like society are not present, but we can't be part of society. Mm-hmm. We have to be s- separate. We have to, as human beings, as artists, particularly if you're going to be exposing yourself emotionally, which sometimes we have to do on camera. But if you suppress your emotion in real life, then don't suddenly think that when the camera starts rolling, you're going to be able to pull from a, a source of rich emotional content because it's not there because you've been suppressing it in real life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's, for me, about practicing as much as you can away as a human being listening as a human being being present as a human being like i have a rule now if i meet someone for coffee or whatever i leave my phone off i don't even put it on a table by nature put it on a table i'm open to checking it all the time you know it's funny you say that you know because whenever we meet for coffee oh god he has two phones that he puts on the table yeah and one of them is playing just like tiktok <laughs> videos that just scrolls by itself it's on an algorithm and a little like AI program but you answer so many phone calls when we're ta- when we're <laughs> meeting for coffee and that is so rude <laughs> and I'm going to call you out in front of our five million listeners okay take off the million and that's pretty accurate <laughs> thank you Peyton <laughs> what do you want from me <laughs> I want loyalty <laughs> You have to buy I, that, Reese. You have to buy ro- royalty here. I, royalty, loyalty. <laughs> I love. It. What do you want from me? Um. Anyway, yeah. back to yeah. It's about yeah, being. Yeah, um, yeah. You know. Yeah, I think you have to be honest with them, though, we Sam. In terms of this is education, and they're allowed to come in and fail, but we have to hold them accountable and think. We know where 
we think you want to get to. So in order for you to get to that, you have to listen to our constructive criticism. And that, in fact, I'm going to take away criticism. Our constructive critiques. Yeah. And it's not personal. That's why I have that saying at the school. The work is the work is the work. I'm critiquing your work. Not you as a person because I don't know you as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I'm critiquing is what you bring in twice a week to me. Mm-hmm. So I think artists can't be that precious. Not that our students are precious, but that's part of what we do. You know, we bring our soul, our artistry to the table. It's like you can go on a set or you can have a self-tape. You're presenting your, your best work. Does not mean you're going to get the job. When you go on set, you're coming into set with a group of ideas. Natalia might not have liked some of the stuff that I was doing. Great, she redirects me. I can't take that personally. That's what I'm there to do, to serve the text, to push a narrative forward. I'm just a conduit from the author to the audience, and I can't get in the way of that. Yeah, I like that you're putting yourself like for the greater good, you know? There's a, there's a greater good. There's a, there's, there's a uh, purpose with that as well. You're not letting the ego get in the way. It can't get in the way. Yeah, and you're becoming part of the storytelling experience. And not It's not just about you. Mm. Um, I have a good student, mm. and uh, it's so funny because a lot of actors are always like this, and it's always with actors. I have rarely found it in any other kind of sport or craft or business yeah. adventure. Um she was having trouble with the scene yeah. and uh, I was like question how many how many like auditions mm. have you total gone out of on your entire life yeah. she goes maybe four and I'm like okay what do you what's your day job she's like a pharmacist in her day job and yeah. I'm like cool did they just send you out to become a pharmacist after four days of training mm. or four hours of training. And she's like, no. I'm like, how many years were you studying? Out of those years, how many hours total do you think you studied? She's like, oh my God, thousands. Right. I'm like, yeah. Right. That's what you need with acting. Of course you're not getting it. You've only been out on four auditions. This is your first or maybe second acting school you've been in. Right. Yeah. Twice a week for three hours per lesson. And are you doing anything outside of class? This is also something else that I harp on the students. I'm like, great, you did my homework. What else are you guys doing to get better? How many scripts are you reading? What are you doing studying on your own? Are you getting together and just running scenes mm. with each other? Are you dissecting performances? Are you watching TV shows and just like, okay, I watched it, I enjoyed it? Or are you really dissecting it and trying to gain something from it? You know, there's a lot of outside work that needs to be done. Sorry, I was talking, but go ahead. <laughs> There's your first laugh. There you go. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Peyton. That was genuinely oh, funny. Shut the fuck up. He did it. <laughs> oh, you did it. <laughs> that was genuinely funny. No, I did it. Um, I did it. It's interesting, and not from an egotistical point of view. I've watched each episode of Black Cake, not only the ones that I'm in, about four times, because I'm studying, and I think I hope actors like to do it. Watching your peers. Yeah. What are they doing? I have to give a shout out to Mia Isaac, who is a leading black cake. When she shot that, she was 17. Whoa. She is incredible. And when I think of her and the work that I watch her do, the work that I'm currently watching her do, and then look at my students, I'm like, you have no idea. I saw her workload. I saw how she was pushed to the nth degree, her artistry. I mean, she was a beast. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, what are you doing? And, you know, your time might come, but she's doing that already at 17. Yeah. It's quite it's quite amazing. And when you watch that, you go, and if you're in that age group or, like, you could have played that or auditioned for that role, that's your competition. Right. That's who you're going up against. Right. So f- watch the pilot and see, okay, she probably read four out of these whatever scenes she's in for the pilot Mm. because they showcase these type of characteristics, they show these type of arcs, and wow, I wonder how I would have played it, Mm. you know? Like, that's what I would do as, like, a tactical thing as an actor. Right. Um, She's incredible. uh, uh, Please watch episode seven. It made me cry. I mean, what she's asked to do... mm. Um, and I hope you don't mind 
uh, MJ. MJ, I got, I got a message from her who's a showrunner when she had to film one of the uh, scenes. No, in no spoilers, seven. right? No, no spoilers. spoilers. Okay, okay, cool. And episode seven's finished anyway. Um, on Wednesday, so it's already out there. Okay. okay but okay. she sent me. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. <laughs> 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 she sent me a message about what she did and that's a showrunner who's just watched this who created this world and hands it over to a 17 year old and I forgot about it and then I saw the scene I'm like goodness gracious me I just incredible yeah. but it's that dramatic imagination mm. that oftentimes I think we we have we're born with it and we have it as kids and then society parents school trying to fit in peers we kind of, we don't lose it, we, we suppress it to try to fit in. Mm. And I often say to the students, you've got to be a child again. Stop caring what people think. Stop trying to, Bro. stop trying to get the casting director to like you. Get the casting director to like your work and become a fan of your work. Well, we're on the same page. Like this parallels with everything I'm saying in class. Like literally, I'm just saying it in a different way in my class. This, the same things you're talking about in preaching, and this is probably why we get along so well and we, we work together so well because we're on that same wavelength, and it mm. it garners results. It's not like we're just but it garners not instant results. It takes time. We say, do you know? Yeah, but it garners serious results yeah. because after a certain point, yeah. let's let's look at the actors who are really working. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. The actors who have long-term careers, mm. the, the majority Longevity. Of them, they're always working on, on their craft. They're yeah. not lazy actors. No. For the most part, all of them, no. they're, they're legit. Yeah. You know who one of my favorite actors is and who is a legit artist? Yeah. Uh, Dylan McDermott. Mm. So underrated. Yeah. So underrated. Uh, he's a leading man, but a character actor at the same time. I don't know if you've ever seen some of his yeah. Netflix stuff. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah plays like a murderer or one of them like a, a psycho and you're like holy shit is that Dylan McDermott yeah I wish that was a sound bite <laughs> because yeah but for those guys and you just said we Sam they're artists so many and I don't want to sound too detrimental so many actors coming into the industry now and I had a long ch chat with a, a manager yesterday who's quite a big manager and is looking to fill out her roster so many actors coming in, in, into, into the industry now mm -hmm. want to be famous as opposed to just want to work and I don't know whether it's a, an American thing or a West Coast thing this is the only place I've ever heard actors going yeah I'm a TV actor where I come from you're just an actor mm. which means you do radio you do TV you do theatre you do film any portal any platform that gets you to use your voice and your body that's storytelling we're storytellers mm. And as long as you're telling a story, it can be in any medium. Mm -hmm. But here I hear, yeah, I'm a TV actor. Hmm. Then you're shutting down so many other avenues of work. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, I'm tired of being an actor. I want to be famous. That's it. I've decided I want to be famous. Hmm. I want to be famous. Why? Because I want money and I want the glory. It's such a crazy thing to say out loud. Do you know what I mean? Even saying it out loud as a bit is like famous so... Famous for being what or doing what? Oh, I want to act. I want to be famous for acting. Like, that's so crazy yeah, but you know why. to say. What's and that? You know why? I want people to like me. No. Adore me. I, I think don't. when you watch good TV or film... Okay. It looks easy. Oh, I can do that. It looks easy for a reason because it's craft. And that's the whole point of it. People want easy access to fame, money, and fortune. You know? There, there's it, it, um, I, I heard someone else um, say it a little bit more uh, on the button it looks effortless I doubt that very much it looks effortless not easy okay pedantics but that's okay no I think there's a difference between effortless and easy right what's the difference then effortless mm. easy is like swimming looks effortless when done well but you know there's a lot of energy going into it Good actors, we Sam, and you hear all the time, oh, they're just doing nothing on screen. Are you kidding me? There's so much going on there. They think, I see it on self-tapes. There's no life. They just think, I'm right. acting. 
but it's not easy. It's not like uh, it, it's difficult. But, but it's perceived uh, but to be easy. It's perceived because I think they're not being specific. I, I think they're, 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 they're it's perceived to be effortless because mm. that person is just doing it. But it's not. No. It's actually very difficult to make it look effortless. Yes. It's like a martial artist, you know, rolling in jujitsu or doing a technique. Oh, whoa! They 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 don't even look stressed. It like looks when effort- I chucked you out earlier. Yeah, that was a bit. I hope he shows you that. That was it's effortless. Already, it, you know what? I'm. It's a win for you. You're I mean, 86. I mean, and, I, mean I guess know. that's an argument ab- ab- about natural ability and training. I mean, you train all the time for that, and I would. You know, I'm out of shape. I'm old, and came in and just locked you up. And you're <laughs> what if? What if I just beat the you know, shit out of you right now happen. on air? You have How the opportunity. Would, what if? No, no. Peyton right now. It. What if I beat the shit Alex out of you, it. and they have to stop me, and then you're driving home like. <laughs> <laughs> and Troy's like, what happened? <laughs> Can you imagine how crazy I that would be? I heard you just say 20 minutes ago, oh, my neck, my neck, my there neck. Go. Anyway, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? Training as opposed to just having natural talent. To well. Thank you, Peyton. You know what? You're terrible. <laughs> how about that? Huh? Terrible at what? Be specific. Terrible. At what? You're a terrible, terrible person. <laughs> How about that, I'm British terrible, guy? I'm terrible at a lot of things. And you know yes. what? I'm calling the embassy and saying he doesn't have his papers. Um, I have my papers, but I, but I don't have my green card. I lost my green card. And whoever found my green card, please, please post it back to me. Uh, That's a fact. You're going back. I, no, I, you're going I'm, back. No, I'm I'm legal to be here, but I don't. Are have you? Yeah. Show us the paperwork. I've got the paperwork. I'm I'm legally here, but anyway. Dude, that'd be crazy I just, if I got you deported. Right, <laughs> in the middle of this interview, just r- rough housed out of here. Oh, man. I totally forgot what I was going to talk to you about after this. Not man. listening. Not listening. This is what I'm talking about. The art huh? of not listening. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. That's it. I just saw your face and I remembered it. Pet peeves. So. Mm. <laughs> that's your second one from uh, You as a teacher, mm. biggest pet peeve with students. And whatever that thing is, and now it's always stuck in my head. When it's it like, wasn't true. You can, oh. I keep bringing yeah. this up. Yeah. You can have pet peeves. Okay. You can have more than one. That is a, that is a thing. Yeah, you can. But if you're mentioning one thing, yes, it is a pet peeve. Okay. But there is pet peeves. Thank you, Alex. Our know. resident expert uh, That bothers me, too. I think about on, that all the time now. Linguistics. We all love Alex much Thank more you. than we sound. That's true. The fans will say that. I am aware of this. <laughs> but your pet peeve, your biggest pet peeve as a as a teacher. A lack of passion. Ooh. So, uh, seriously, in, in, in terms of, I see students wanting results and understand that. But to do this, for me to do anything in life, your chosen career, then you must love it. I apologize. That's wow. That's second pet peeve: students who leave their phones on. Hold on, let me check my TikTok real quick. <laughs> because he wants to be famous. Oh, How many followers do I have on TikTok? My TikTok is terrible. I'm taking over next week. I know you all demand it. Oh, dude, I would we love Sam's to hear. world. Hmm. I would love to hear your podcast every week. I would call you, in. No one, no in, one would tune into I'm my like, podcast. I'd be I'm like, I'm gonna kill you. I'm not. I'm not that interesting. Um, <laughs> it's like, um, stop calling. I'm, I'm gonna kill you tonight. <laughs> I know it's you, we Sam. Um, um, okay, lack of passion. Yeah. And, does that mean they're coming to class not prepared, or just like their choices are like? Eh. No, all of it. Like. Mm. If you're coming to class and you're only meeting twice a week and you're not prepared, then you are not in this. No, you're, you're not, not passionate about it. So you're never going to get the results that you desire. That kills me. Mm-hmm. I think if I had someone who's ultra passionate about something, they don't have the craft yet, I can work with that, we Sam. Because you can almost overload them and they'll do whatever they need to do. Yeah. That I love. That I can work with. But the apathy, but then spouting, yeah, I want to be a serious regular. But I sent you sides three weeks ago, and you're still not off book. How is this going to happen? Mm-hmm. That that's I I agree with that's stuff like that. That's that's just uh, that for me. If there's a lack of that, I'm like bye. Okay, next next person. I don't have time mm. for that. Um, stuff that gets me fired up though. You know what it is? Um, not paying attention to detail. Uh, consistent like. But that but, that in in honesty though, we some I think that comes with experience and time. Uh. And I'm, let me be specific with this. Okay. Um, 
hey, please upload this to a streaming website. And mm. if it's password protected, please put the okay. password on there. First time, not paying attention or whatever, that's fine. Mm. Hey, make sure it's a streaming thing. Don't I don't want to download a gig just to see your one minute video, okay? Mm. Keep it on a streaming platform, please. Yeah. Second time, we'll have a more in-depth discussion. By the third time, I'm about to explode. I literally feel my blood pressure raising. But is that because for a lot of people, this is their first intro to the industry? That's a given for you and I, because that's what we have to do for a living. Do you know what I mean? My man, no, absolutely not. I make it so clear on how to do things. Oh, oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Because I go, and then they go, well, how do I do? And I go, great question. iMovie, everybody have it? All their heads go like this, like wonderful. When you export it, you have the options. I don't even know that. How do you exp- how do you export your self tapes? Um, via Hightail. That's the website, <laughs> right? You use Hightail. Am I crazy here? I actually don't know. I don't, I don't know. know what Hightail okay. is. What are you two doing here? What, oh, what do you mean? I wow, guess, he just turned I on you. Wait, 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 wait. You're supposed to be on our yeah, side this whole time. What happened? I'm disappointed. I what mean, is Hightail? Yeah. No, my, I know something. Look at that. What is Hightail? It's, it's, it's a <laughs> website. Is it a website? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to do lose it. Do you know what it is? <laughs> <He doesn't laughs> no. know. Is that high as in like high or high as in height? It's height. where I send my self tapes and from there that gets sent to the company. Okay, to. wait. So what do you film on? Like, what my do you film? Your, your okay. phone. Yeah. Okay. okay. Upload it to my laptop and send it via my laptop to Hightail, which oh, sends it okay. to the Okay. You don't edit it at all on your phone? No. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. So okay. I don't, I don't you know just... To. I'm a bit of a technophobe. You have to show me. Seriously, I don't know. This is amazing to me. What I do is I film it on my phone, yes. right? But whenever I upload it to my, my laptop, yeah. I put it in the editing software iMovie. Yeah. So that I'm able to pump up the volume a little bit mm. because sometimes there's an issue with whoever's computer. I make sure the volume is very clear and maybe I have to cut in to the tape because I started. I t- well, I do that on my phone before I send it. So you edit it on your phone. Yeah. And then you just upload or it. Or on my laptop before I send it. <laughs> what do you edit it on your computer with? Edit. Oh. Oh, the, the like in. built-in like trim yeah. and everything. Okay. Okay. So that's what you use. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that works. But when you export it to Hightail, which is a website, yeah. have have you ever looked at like when when they ask for specifications for the like how many megabytes or anything like that? No. That's okay. All right. I'm sure it's been fine this whole time. Obviously, you're. you're yeah, nobody said anything to well, you. Look, the bottom line, we Sam. But oh, sorry. This is the whole point. Why yeah. I'm this specific? Because, um, fun fact. Yeah. I need to recount because I've only counted till 2021. I've I've gone on way over 400 auditions, yeah. and the variety of self tapes specifications. I know you two have when you're doing self tape self tapes. Yeah. Sometimes there's very specific like. Yeah. Keep it under this number of megabytes. Make sure like it's cropped to where, yeah. you know, there's so much specifications yeah. because I'm trying to give, and the class I teach is Art of the Self Tape. I'm mm-hmm. trying to give my students the best edge so that the ca- there's no excuse for the casting director or the casting director assistant not to watch their tape. Right. Does that make sense? It does, but also, in addition to that, ironically, the, the job that we spoke about um, prior to... Uh, going on air yeah. that I had a callback for today it was done last week and it was so specific what they did not want can I talk about it? you can't talk about the project but you can talk about the the process of I'm going to talk about the project mm. I'm going to get you in trouble <laughs> thank you for that I'm going to get you uh, okay sorry go ahead um, it said um, they do not want another person in the shop blah 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 blah, blah. and I approach self tapes as a short film I have to be creative and there's a scene where this father's talking to his child who's been bullied and they're having this kind of heart to heart in a diner and my child's now at the age that he reads really well so I was running lines with him and I thought you know what let me just put you in the scene and I filmed it dirty I thought you know what we're in a diner I'm, I'm here and 
um, I've got the camera just over his shoulder, so you, so you can see his hair. And oh, that's fine. In the middle of this, but it said no one else should be in the shot. Mm. It was specific, and I thought I don't care. Well, that's something I tell my students. So it's that's not, not being specific to what they've required, but artistically, I thought I'm just going to. I had to ignore it, and it paid dividends. I think sometimes. I I think yes, you. Um, because of how connected you were truly into the into the scene, mm. they weren't going to watch that and go, "Well, shit, he's the, he's the guy, but there's yeah. a kid in it." That's what I tell my the, students. The, the work has to be quality. But but from for the students who are in the class currently, yeah. I listen, know the rules first, yes, and right. then le- right. learn when to break them. You're right. You're right. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Because let's do the basics first. Yeah, there's some students who wanted to do stuff like that, and I'm like, that's great. But your profile, the whole yeah. s- scene, and I can't see what's going on in your face. And th- that was that's an idea. This just came out of actually having a camera rehearsal. I'm thinking, well, j- just leave him there. For Eyeline, it was perfect. Just leave him there. And actually, his performance is drawing me. And I'm thinking, oh my god, I need to. I- I'm feeling something. I need to capture this. Yeah. So let's leave him there, and it just worked as opposed to a stylistic, artistic idea of this thing. It just came out of the art, actually, and being specific. Yeah. But I'm gonna say, right? no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm no. sure. But, but, but you can see his hair and his ears and stuff, and he was kind of. I'm gonna around. say what it is. I'm gonna ruin it for you. Everybody, it's Fast and Furious 22. <laughs> wow! Um, Congratulations! Congratulations, Thank you so much, man! It's, uh, That's really great. 19 callbacks. Wow! You're very particular. Well, you they, know. they really. They know what they want. Well, if uh, were you called in for that? Uh, no, didn't think so. I passed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Number six, <laughs> seven, <laughs> eight. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you got one there. That's one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they had to learn the basics first. That's cool. I love what you said. Learn, learn, learn the rules first, and then break them. Yeah, learn, learn, learn the you know, learn the rules, and then you can. Figure out when to break them, when to bend them. Mm. You know, there's stuff you can do to really also, push the boundaries. It, it it has to serve the purpose. It can't be, you know, actors tend to have these oh great ideas. No, but is it helping the narrative? Yeah. Or are you getting in the way of the story? Is it oh, serving the story? Here's one of the best questions I get, and this is the best answer I always give. Uh, they go, uh, "What do you think about props in a scene or miming things?" I'm like, "It doesn't matter." Are, is it is it serving the scene? Are, are you are you gaining a more truthful performance with or without something? Then that's what's important. They're not going to watch that and go, "Oh shoot, he was, it was so great, but he was miming the steering wheel. Mm. He didn't bring in a real steering wheel." I often say, to, actors have props. Real people have things that they use all the time. What? Actors <laughs> use props. Yeah. Real people have things that they use all the time. To right. Say, have a familiarity about it. Oh. <laughs> My intellectual capacity has been compromised. <laughs> I thought you were just... Like, actors use props, and people use things. There's a major difference, because you have no ownership of it. <laughs> right, because it's a prop, it doesn't belong to you. But that makes sense, right? No, it belongs to set. I understood no. the first time. So we said it belongs to the prop no, master. I believe, in terms of the artist that you are, right? No, no, it belongs to the prop master. No, it you don't. Belo- you can't take no, it home with no, you. I'm not going to fire him. Props. No, but uh. let, let let me say something. There. For example, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love harassing you so much. We'll see how long this goes on. Then I'm not going to say anything now. Um, <laughs> so, all right, talking to the mic, um, please. <laughs> there's a young actor. Not actually got young who's the lead in the show who I've known since he was 14 mm. show on CW and he's a Brit who's playing an American who plays American football lead of the show when he first flew over in the first season he never played American football at all but he made a thing of going to a sports shop and buying an American football and holding on to it even when he's at home because he was playing an American footballer so although it's a prop for him it became this thing that was part of his life yeah does that make sense yeah yeah yeah. and i can tell when an actor is using a prop as opposed to they're so in it he's laughing (laughs) 
and they're so invested mm -hmm. and they have a relationship with a phone, a bottle, a cigarette, a family heirloom. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So for them, don't make it look like a prop. Right. Of course not. That's crazy. Like th the relationship with the object. And what's yeah. It? Yeah. 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 But I think they don't think about that. Have a relationship with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Actually, know? today in my Zoom class, mm -hmm. somebody was doing a scene and uh, she did well in it, um, but she was holding a coffee mug and there was supposed to be coffee in I it. I know what you're going to say. And, and like she's moving it like this. Yeah. And honestly, it was, I, was, I told her it drives me crazy. We because Sam. Is there coffee in there? I see that a lot on TV. Someone will order a coffee in a styrofoam cup, it's hot, and they're doing that. There's no weight in there and I don't know what the temperature is, but that's acting. Yeah. You can act weight and temperature, and I think it's just lazy. And so that then yeah. becomes a prop, as opposed to I need my morning coffee to wake me up. I saw you, um, real quick. Uh, our time on Adobe Radio has come to an end. However, the show continues on. Make sure you tune in tomorrow on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcast if it's been fixed. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you for tuning in live. Make sure you watch Black Cake on Hulu. It is not a cooking show. It is a great, great theatrical storytelling experience. Season finale this coming Wednesday. Season finale this coming Wednesday. Um, make sure you check it out on Hulu. Anthony Mark Barrow. Uh, check out uh, IDSA acting program here in Los Angeles if you're looking for a great acting school. Thank you for joining the show us. Continue, the show continues on. Um, I uh, We're going to wrap it up here soon, but... Um, I just remember on the getaway, uh, you know what, this this uh, this joke isn't funny. I just realized we just did that whole thing, and it wasn't going to be a good good joke. Yeah. Yeah, because it's gone. The it's moment gone. is lost. Yeah. And that's good acting right The moment right there. got away from us. Yeah. Just said that. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Anthony, what's your favorite part about me? Seriously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God, we could be here for a while. Uh no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love your playful nature. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what else? <laughs> no, you're playful. You're, um, <laughs> you're disrespectful in a I nice know. way. I, I love it. You've got a very British sense of humor. You're very Ricky Gervais-esque. Oh, yeah. I remember you telling me this last and time. I, I love that. Gervais. I, I mean, I love him. I have a thing. Uh... I can't wait till I don't have to censor myself anymore in life. Wouldn't that be great? In this industry. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, don't we? Yeah. You know, we we've got to play the politics of this. Yeah. My students say I make a face in class. I make faces a lot in class. Oh, do you? I just comment because I'm English and get away with it. Yeah. I give looks apparently, and I think my producers know some of those looks. You have an array of looks. Oh, yeah. Mm. All of them awful. But. Oh. oh, some of the cameras. Don't worry awesome. about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, there's some filtering that has to go on for sure because we're professionals. Yeah. And we have to create a safe environment. That's, that's really important. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm not being like crazy in class. So don't worry. Yeah. Don't fire me. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, <laughs> can you imagine? You got really defensive yeah, about yeah, that I really know. quickly. I know, right? Because, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there something you need to tell us, we Sam? Um, no, I haven't yelled at anybody. <laughs> oh, we, we don't yell. We're not a yelling. School. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I know, with you. I know. I'm joking. No, no, no. I'm very communicative. You are. You. Are, I, I have heard your feedback, and it, it's very thorough. Uh, it's very caring. You actually surprised me. Um, a lot of time, a lot of patience for the students, and actually, they're very in, in a serious note. Now, they're very lucky to have you because I spoke about you on the back of Getaway because I've never met you before, and I remember coming back in fact in Mexico I got you to do a QA and a with them remember oh yeah yeah that was nice and um, just your work ethic and I'm like this is a guy who's always working and that's who you're up against that's mm -hmm. who you're up against and then fortunately you know you came in and did a, a live artist lounge with them and then they're very fortunate to uh, yeah. have you because now the strike's over I'm not sure how long we're going to have you for yeah. um, so they need to take advantage no, I'm staying I'm staying yeah, well, knowing you, you're going to be... Oh, hit. yeah, if I'm working. Yeah. Right, so yeah, they need true. to take advantage of that, you yeah. know. Because um, I don't know too many other schools who do that in LA, that yeah. have active uh, faculty who are actually in the industry working. Uh, is the guy named Batman still there? No, he's he's not. He's gone, right? Batman. Yeah, do you remember during that talk years ago? And I... <sighs> he he. <laughs> I was, this, this is the best... I don't care, I'm telling it. Is that Okay. No, he's not there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we some. 
That this is we're gonna end it here. That happened twice. <laughs> Bro, I go, any questions? I go, ah, yes, what's your name? Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Batman, and I go, and he starts talking real quick, and I go, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, what, what, what would you say your name was? Batman. And he goes, I go, Batman? And he goes, Batman. I'm like, Batman. And he goes, yeah, Batman. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Two introduced guests twice, and you're introducing yourself as Batman. He was serious. <laughs> I know. That's. But actually, the only time we did it was when we had the two industry guests. I'm like, what, what, what a, come on. Yeah, unprofessional. <laughs> in all honesty, if in, in all, honest, all honesty, if if he came and auditioned for me and he had Batman as his name, I'd be like, this is a crazy person. We can't have him on set. And I'd be like, no. Maybe pass. he's campaigning. To what? To what? Play Batman. Maybe was this when they were casting for Robert Pattinson, the Bat Matt Reeves, no. the Batman? No. Oh shit, you're right. No, no wait, was it? No. Okay, of no. course not. I, guys. I would, guys, I would guys. love it to be the case because that would be a wonderful choice. But uh, no. It, hey, it's, I love you. I'm not shaking your hand. Please. No. Oh my god. What now? That watch is terrible. Oh my god, what's going? On? Oh my god, do you see how terrible his watch is, dude? That is the ugliest watch I've ever seen. <laughs> Do you know what though? It's taken what is it forty five minutes? This is this is good. Oh my god. Where where did you get that? Please tell me it wasn't a gift. I'm kidding. Look how mean I am. Everybody's gonna think I'm the meanest no, person. They don't. they don't take you seriously. I don't kidding. take you seriously. No, no, no. What where'd you get that watch? I don't know. I've had it years. Oh man, I hope it doesn't like a family. <laughs> I know. My my late dead father left me this. Oh my god, are you being serious? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, don't, 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 you can't say that. That's terrible. That, that's, I can't stop. Hey, I'm really sorry. I, hey, I'm so sorry. Hey, man, don't say if that. If there are any listeners, put comments in there. No, comments. I'm, Anthony, if that was really your, I'm, I, I apologize. That was, that was too much because. His last breath. Take the watch, son. You know what I would have said and then if I was you? Oh. Let's do that bit again. No. Come on, it's just a funny bit. Your hands are slightly moist. I know. <laughs> do the, do Thank it. you, Alex. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> Black King, season finale this week. Catch all the episodes on Hulu. Uh, follow Anthony Mark Barrow um, uh, on Instagram and uh, check out IDSA Los Angeles uh, for some great acting schools. Hey, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Uh, Black Cake, as you said, please watch. Season finale, Wednesday, 9 p.m. You're, you're honestly, you're much better than I thought you were going to be. <laughs> I'll take the compliment. Play us out, Peyton. Play us out, Peyton. What a wonderful episode. It's always good to have, you know, do charity work here on the show. <laughs> right? Help the homeless. Please share, can have some more. Um, if you'd like to buy Anthony's jacket, it'll 11, be 11. It'll be 12. <laughs> <laughs> always remember what to a listen, warm laugh. think, and talk. Don't interrupt me. <laughs>